राधे राधे एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू अनदर से Thank you, Sandhya. So, Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening to all of you. Very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to yet another uh, exciting, engaging week of daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. It's always uh, a pleasure to get back here on Mondays after a little bit of a break. You know, seems like a long break the weekend. Uh, always excited to be back, and I I hope you feel the same. I mean, the feeling is mutual. so let's get started uh today's session let me share my screen and we will get under way okay are you able to see my screen yes right okay so we will get started by getting the blessings of god and guru in working their blessings like we always do so let me recite the opening prayers and then we will get started guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwar ha guru sakshat par brahma tasmay shri guru ve namaha वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चानूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु All right, Radhe Radhe. Good morning, good evening, once again to all of you. So let's get started. Um, like we are doing a recap of chapter two, so we'll go a little faster. Typically, we spend, um, you know, one day one shloka. We do. We are on chapter four actually, but then we are doing a recap of all the important Bhagavad Gita verses from first three chapters as well, and that's where we'll go a little faster. We'll probably pick up two shlokas or two or three shlokas a day. so that we can get back to our regular routine of chapter 4 after having covered all the key concepts of bhagavad gita which anyway we will go keep on going back and forth uh, like we always do so today i picked up uh, chapter 3 verse was uh, 9 and 10 that we are going to talk about today all the topics are important i think there is some secret joke going on here but let's get started okay कर्मणोन्यत्र लोकोयम कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कांथेय मुक्त संग समाचर विल पिक फ्यू हैंड्स फॉर दिस एंड फ्यू फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन राहुल जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो हेड राधे राधे राहुल राधे राधे कर्मणो नेत्र लोकोयम कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कौंते मुक्त संग समाचर राधे राधे नाइस राहुल राधे राधे पिक मे बी टू मोर हैंड्स एंड देन यू मूव टू द नेक्स्ट श्लोक राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे कर्मणो न्यत्र लोकोयम कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कौंतेय मुक्त संग समाचर वेरी नाइस थैंक यू अपर्णा जी वन मोर वील टेक ऑन दिस वन एंड वील मूव टू द नेक्स्ट श्लोका वील डू टू श्लोका टूडे सूर्य प्रकाश जी राधे 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 एस एस पी जी राधे राधे नितिन जी संध्या मैडम 
ियलड This should not be news to us. By now, if you are attending the sessions, therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties without being attached to the results for the satisfaction of God. Let's move on to the next shloka, and then we'll pick up the remaining hands there. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but I'm sure you'll get it right. Saha yagya praja sreshtwa. Purovacha praja patihi. अनेन प्रसविष्यत्वमेवस्तुष्टका पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रसिविस्वध्वम एस वोस्तिष्ट काम धुक वेरी नाइस थैंक यू अष्टोशी सुमेश जी राधे 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 सुमेश जी या आप प्लीज गो एंड राधे राधे जी राधे राधे एवरीवन राधे राधे हाय या प्रजा एस पा पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रजापतिमुखरी राधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेराधेरा
Then we have air that we breathe. In COVID times, people have been slapped a bill of, you know, even hundred hundred thousand dollars just for the ventilator support that they got, and it brought tears to a guy's eyes, saying that God has given me this free. I have never had, you know, I never expressed that gratitude for that, and here it is. Humans, if they have to give us air just to keep us alive for a few days, this is how much it it costs them. So just think about the ability for us to be able to breathe. It's a huge privilege God has given us. The water that we drink, you know, when we are thirsty, we imagine the value of water. Or if you are in a desert, you can imagine that we take so much for granted. The light that illumines our day, it's a huge gift being able to see sun. Just imagine if you're living in a place where you don't have sun, it's not good for human psychology either. Now, I, I was living in Seattle for a year, not to suggest it's a bad place too, but when it gets depressing, it can play on your mood as well. So sunlight is something that is required for human life as well. People, they create solar lamps, artificial solar lamps, just to feel bright in life. That much effort humans have to put in to get things which are normally, which are bestowed to us by God for free completely. So let's move on. So these are the gifts. Uh, now they do come free or they come with an obligation is what we are going to talk about today. Okay, so in US they say, right, Swamiji says there are no free lunches. So there are no free lunches, even on this earth. Okay, we'll talk about this concept now. Even though it is seemingly free, but with great privilege comes great responsibility as well. And that is what we are going to talk about, what Bhagavad Gita is going to teach us about this. Okay. Now, quick summary. 3.8, Lord Krishna was mentioned that action is superior to inaction. We had discussed about this concept. In this shloka, Lord Krishna is saying that perform action. First of all, choose action. Inaction is not an option. It is condemned. When you choose action, it should be performed in a spirit of yagna. Don't perform action for your own bhog or for your self-enjoyment. Now, that is where the science of action is being introduced. Now, he's explaining any work that is not done as a sacrifice to God. What will happen? It will cause bondage. You are doing a binding karma, okay, which has repercussions or effects. Then he expounds on the science of work that performing your prescribed duties is a must. So you do action, prescribed duties is a must. If you run away from them, there's no greater sin than that. Okay. So actions, which is performance of prescribed duties. And then he says, however, when you perform that, do it without attachment to results. This is a science of work. And then the furthermore, you do it as karam yoga. Perform your duty, number one. Do it without attachment to results, number two. Do it for the satisfaction of God, number three. And then it becomes yagna. Okay. That's essentially what these shlokas are talking about. Hope you got the sequence. Running away from your duties or inaction, procrastination is not an option at all. Okay, There cannot be any more sinful activity than doing that because it will it'll take us to the hellish abodes. And um, it, is, it is very, very strongly condemned by Lord Krishna. Okay. And we cannot use spirituality as an excuse to run away from our material duties. So let's go deeper. Now, all the elements of this nature, if you look at it, the same concept. We looked at that hierarchy. I have not flashed it again today, but Purusha glances at Prakriti. And that's where the whole cycle starts unfolding. From Prakriti comes Mahan Tattva, from Mahan comes the Ahamkar Tattva, from Ahamkar comes the Panchatan Matras, from Panchatan Matras comes the Panch Mahabhut. And that basically is the Srishti. The entire earth is created out of that. Okay. So if you look at it, we are all the parts of the system. And as being part of that system, our constitutional position is that to serve the whole. This whole Ansh Anshi relationship that we spoke about. So if you look at uh, the sun, it lends. And that is even nature is giving us daily testimonial around it. How? If you look at the sun, it is lending stability to the earth and provides heat and light necessary for life to exist. 
sun is serving the creation of thing is serving the god as well earth creates food from its soil for our nourishment and also holds essential minerals in its womb for a civilized lifestyle we do so many earth actually teaches us forbearance also we do so many things that the earth earth complain i mean sometimes it does in forms of earthquakes and tsunamis but that's when it has to restore its balance but other than that look at the amount of forbearance earth has the whole day we are walking on it and we keep on you know building big big buildings on top of it roads and exploiting minerals out of it and it's just giving 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 all the times right and then if you, even if you look at the air that moves the life force in our body also it is moved by air uh, which uh, which enables and the sound energy that is also enabled by the ether component right and air and we humans are also an integral part of the entire system of god creation so we are also part of this creation it's like an ecosystem that we are part of right if we if we make it an ego system we insert ourselves on the top of the hierarchy and think everything god has created for our uh, gratification that is not the case it is a balance that has been created and everybody has to every part of this nature has to work as a well oiled machine in a factory like we have and pull pull its own weight in grand scheme of things so nature is doing its part what do we need to do is the question and that is what these shlokas are going to expound upon because we are also part of this grand system like the system is not created just for our enjoyment okay there is a there's a balance that we have to maintain as part of uh, being part of god and as being part of this big ecosystem um, that 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 uh, that we are uh, an integral part of and that's what we are going to try to understand today so moving on going back to the same thing the earth that we walk upon the air that we breathe the water that we drink all this stuff and the light that illumines our day all of this stuff they are the gifts of creation and because we are bestowed these gifts they are truly gifts you know you can imagine if you think deeply about it it's a huge privilege actually to have as humans that we take take for granted and if you think deeply about everything that balance that is maintained here think about how nature unfolds just when uh, the winter start coming in the nature will start giving us citrus fruits which can provide for vitamin c that our gums would need to fight off scurvy and the, the ailments that usually accompany that season when the summer season comes the nature is able to give us the fruits those fresh fruits that that cool us off like bale is there so many things are there so nature has a perfect design to serve us and it is happening automatically so if you think deeply about it like einstein said there are only two ways of looking at this world everything is a miracle or nothing is and if you think about it it is the former not the latter everything is a miracle every miracle is happening all around us and the problem happens we get that what you call that uh, when we see something repeatedly when we see even some extraordinary thing in ordinary settings we find it very ordinary okay there's a there was an experiment conducted not experiment but a guy joshua bell i think he was a big musician i've told this example previously as well that swami ji talks about i think in chicago railway station and he, he carried out this experiment that this guy his ticket sold for about 2 3000 dollars the previous night his instrument was a you know maybe thousands of dollars worth of instrument and he had done a play or a show that was selling for you know 3000 5000 tickets two days back and the same guy with the same instrument in ordinary setting with ordinary clothes he sat in a metro station and nobody paid attention to him couple of people came they spoke to him maybe a little bit here she checked it out and dropped a couple of dollars in his bowl and they went off what happened what changed it was an ordinary setting and he, they were not able to grasp you know to the same brilliance that he's capable of which which was selling for thousands of dollars few days back similarly we see brilliance around us all the times if you think about it just give me a sec nivan go find keep it be there only
okay sorry about that so yeah so brilliance is happening all around us uh, and uh, and then we kind of start taking things for granted because they become very normal usual for us now these gifts that we partake so grantedly every day to sustain our lives so what brahma ji says or what god has the way he has designed it is there are no free lunches okay so there are certain duties that come along with it and what are those duties is what we are going to talk about just give me a sec i think just Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, like I said, there are no free lunches. Uh, the way this whole uh, system has been designed, now Lord is saying that you are obligated to participate with the creative force of nature. Like I said, right? It's a big, well-oiled machine. The way it has been designed, every every part of this nature, the creation is pulling its weight. They are doing what they are supposed to do, and similarly, there is something expected from humans as well. because we are consuming that you know the parts that have been uh, you know this gifts of nature that god has created for us and what is expected in return is yagna the concept of yagna or sacrifice has been introduced and what is that yagna we will talk about it we spoke about the yagna right you don't have to do a fire sacrifice for that that is one way of doing yagna like people sages used to do previously you know so that the rain gods they become happy and they bestow rains and there are similarly lot of those kind of yagnas in our scriptures but the yagna that god is talking about here is the the spirit in which you work that spirit is a tweak in mind is what he's asking for that when you do things you do it for the pleasure of god that's all that is sacrifice in the yagna is asking about okay let's go a little more into this concept so there was a king let's look at this story there was a king whose name was uh, raghu okay so by the way raghu comes in from the same lineage as lord ram okay so raghu he performed vishwajit yagya and as part of that yagya because clouds they gather water from the earth not for their enjoyment but they shower it back upon the earth see now nature gives us so many examples and analogies cloud keeps on accumulating water what does it do does it hold it for yourself no it gives it back right similarly this yagya is if you look at it the spirit of that this whole wealth that we acquire um you know as during our lifetimes we don't come with it we have actually acquired it from this system only right the salary that we get if you look at it and the end of the day nothing if we are not creating it we are actually accumulating it from the system around us by serving them or or creating different uh, what do you call that uh, different constructs economic or social constructs that we have that enables us to generate all that wealth right but the bottom line is it it gets generated from the system itself now raghu he 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 did this yagya where he said that whatever i have earned i'm going to use this wealth to please god by serving his citizens with it Right, the king he has the kar or the taxation system, and plus whenever they get other kingdoms under their dominion, they get a lot of wealth. So he said, whatever wealth I have accumulated, I'm going to give it back to the citizens as part of that yagya. So he performed that yagya and gave away all of his possessions in charity. Okay, then what happens? Of course, people are happy with that. Now after the yagya was done, he donated all his possessions and then. one he donned the rags of a beggar a beggar and they start he started going around his in, in his kingdom to you know get his meal because now he has become a beggar he has forfeited all his fortune so when he was begging one day let's see what happens he heard some people who they said our king is so benevolent he has given away everything in charity like people were saying that about him so and they were praising their king and they said there is nobody in the world as charitable as him now when raghu heard that he was actually pained it's not that he felt good 
people are praising him he actually felt the pain and why does he feel pain let's see that he said what are you discussing so they said that you know don't ever say that again the people said you know we are praising our king because there's nobody as charitable he gave away everything in his wealth and he said don't ever say that ragu has given nothing let's look at his spirit and he said that because furthermore he goes on to say go and ask your king ragu that when he came into this world did he possess anything he was born empty handed and there was absolutely nothing that belonged to him that he has given away so that is the true spirit of giving away that is a sacrifice that he did but if you think about deeply about this as well there is absolutely nothing we bring to this world we generate from this system only and very few people they even get the privilege to give it back also right even the big big billionaires uh, of this era right we see even after reaching the peak of material um, you know uh, materialism where one only thinks that only if we were millionaire billionaire trillionaire you know will be so happy look at the people who have reached that peak even at that point they have a sense of dissatisfaction they think you know i need to do something more and then they become philanthropic they start giving back getting associated with the cause because that starts giving them a sense of fulfillment so sacrifice purifies and it 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 actually gives us a sense of satisfaction which hoarding or the other aspect doesn't give us hoarding will bring you more sense of insecurity as opposed to a sense of satisfaction again it is a very direct spiritual principle that we would have experienced um, directly or indirectly even during our lifetimes when you hold when you try to hold on to something it doesn't give you a sense of satisfaction but when you give it back it it gives you some kind of a kick and that's what lord is saying you should have a spirit of sacrifice and when we give away it is very purifying they said that sacrifice purifies and nobody has become poor by giving right so charity or giving away or sacrificing all these things actually do help us cut a corner spiritually for sure so anyway this was a story that swami ji has introduced and then we have spoken about this concept of part is obliged to serve the whole hand and stomach example so when we serve the whole it actually serves the purpose of this creation as well now you have started pulling in your weight as well there are some free riders right you've seen in projects also it happens in life also there are people 20% of the people they are carrying the weight of 80% of the people so those are what are those 80% called they are called free riders right they are just tagging along and uh, they, they are getting cross subsidized but in in uh, in the realm of creation god is saying don't become a free rider pull in your weight because when you'll do that you are helping yourself you are actually helping in the grand scheme of things by pulling in your weight doing the sacrifice that is needed of you because every constituent element of this creation is doing a sacrifice by serving others and if we simply keep serving ourselves we are violating that principle and it will result in binding karmas for you okay so that is the sacrifice that god is talking about let's move on um so this is the spirit of karam yoga actually now if you look at the spirit of karam yoga we look at whole world as belonging to god okay because you think about it when will you do things for the pleasure of god when you have this deep conviction that this whole world is a creation of god it belongs to him at the end of the day right universe is not created for the fulfillment of my desires that i want this i want this i need this this is my desire this will make me happy that is not the purpose of the universe it's in giving you shall receive is how it works and when we perform our duties not for gratifying our mind and senses for the pleasure of god that is essentially karam yoga again it, it ties back to the same concept right you are doing a sacrifice by not having a spirit of bhog that i'm going to do it for my own sake or for the satisfaction of my senses but for the pleasure of god that becomes yoga at that point and sacrifice as well so this term yagna it is actually if you look at it it comes from fire sacrifice but in bhagavad gita it includes all the prescribed action laid down in the scriptures when they are done with the spirit of offering it to god anything that you do with that spirit becomes a yagna it was simplified yagna and satyuga would have been a very complicated and an elaborate affair 
But in Kali Yuga, it is very simplified for us. When you start doing it uh, with the spirit of sacrifice to the God, it becomes yagna at that point. You offer food to the God before eating, that becomes yagna. Right? You have a silent prayer uh, of gratitude whenever something good happens to you. That is also yagna. You do a work and then say, God, God, I offer it to the, your lotus feet. You know, I, I did my best. That is also yagna. So anything that we can tag to God in our mind becomes yagna. Okay, it is very simplified for us in that sense. And it is even in Srivad Bhagavatam, it's, it is mentioned that you have to perform yagna. Without performing yagna, you will be entangled in sinful activities. If you don't do yagna, we simply get entangled. I'll show another slide which will illustrate. But then I got a beautiful forward today. Now look at this picture. Our position is that of a constituent element, which means we have to serve. And what are we doing here? Look at the Ravan. He is actually trying to enjoy. Right? He, he, he basically abducted Mother Sita for his own sake and even you know, vanquished Garud on the way, uh, sorry, Jatayu on the way because he came in between. So our mindset is that to extract the maximum from this world for our enjoyment. By the way, this example comes for Lakshmi as well. They say that Lakshmi or the wealth, it is a material energy of God. And the spirit that we should have of utilizing money is like King Janak. Treat Lakshmi as your daughter. However, the spirit in which we operate because of our conditioned mind in Kali Yuga is treat Lakshmi uh, as something that you want to enjoy like Ravan. Okay, it, it, is, it is for my self-enjoyment. So the spirit of Janak is needed. But anyways, now this is the paradox. Our position is to serve, yet we seek enjoyment. On the other side, God's position is to enjoy. He's the supreme enjoyer because he's the Parampurush and yet he's seeking to serve. Right? He's is seeking to serve, as you can see, which is paradox. Basically, it illustrates the difference in the mindsets that we have. Right? So we have to become godlike. We are even at a vantage position of being the Param Purush and being the supreme enjoyer. He's seeking out opportunities to serve his devotees. And we, despite being in the constitutional position of being a servant, are seeking out opportunities to enjoy and extract enjoyment from this material world for the satisfaction of our body, mind and senses. So that is the difference um, that needs to be corrected. Is what Bhagavad Gita is telling in these shlokas. Now, if you don't do that, what happens? If you don't do that, this is what, what will happen. Now, you will end up doing activities in these three modes, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas for your enjoyment. Now, what are sattva? If you are in association with the modes of goodness, you are preparing your body in higher planetary system, you will go to celestial abodes. We'll talk about those. If you are doing in rajas, then you are going to go into the middle planets like earth, right? Purloka. And if you are doing in tamas, then you will go down in nether regions or in 8.4 million species. Okay, so all three things will happen because of the sinful deeds. And sin is not committing murder. Sin is not just committing murder. Sin is all the binding action that we do. Right? When we are not doing in a spirit of sacrifice, it becomes a sin. And to an extent that Maharaj even used to say that both Pap and Punne are sin. Why? Because Pap, Pap Punne is also binding if it is not done in the spirit of sacrifice to God. So both are binding. So Pap Punne, everything is a sin. So if you extrapolate this definition, everything that we do is a sin if you have not brought God into the mix. So which is kind of a uh, state that uh, we need to reach where God becomes part of our uh, DNA, our, our uh, uh, breath, our ongoing consciousness. And uh, it's like Satat Yuktanam, Nitya Yuktanam, that Nitya, Satat, Anand. All those words are there which basically keep on reiterating the fact that end of the day, God has to be part of our ongoing system with every breath, with every thought. It should be part of our subconscious is the ideal state where we need to reach. And everything and anything and everything that God is pointing towards is figure out ways to do yagya in your mind and uh, build that consciousness that thinks that you are doing 
should be for the pleasure of God and not for any kind of self-seeking. That will result in purification. That will basically qualify as a yagna that God is talking about. And that will take us closer to the goal of life as well. Okay? So all of these things will fall in place. If you don't perform yagya, then whatever we are doing, we are acting, we are just becoming more and more entangled in this world. And we are continuing to contaminate ourselves with the three, three modes of nature. And we are actually writing a business case to get the next body based on the kind of karmas we end up doing. So it's not that we are human, so we'll become human back to back. There's no guarantee. Okay, we might become bird. Our friend might become some other bird or maybe some other. They may go to another Brahman. There is no correlation of, see, two souls meeting again in a lifetime. It's as, as the odds are as good as you finding, uh, you know, a log twice in the same ocean. Okay, very difficult. The, the waves, they rise and they go back into the ocean and never to be, never to meet again. It's that kind of a scenario. Yeah, it is. So typically the point here is that um, if you are not doing it in the spirit of Yagya, we are actually creating our next body, next birth's body based on the tendencies that we are acquiring because of the deeds. And they would qualify as sinful because they are not done with the consciousness of pleasing the God, but they are done with the consciousness of pleasing your own senses and mind. Okay. So that is essentially what God is talking about. Now, um, now material body, when we get, it means suffering. Suffering of birth, death, disease and old age. Now, there is a shloka, I think 13.9, which says, uh, Jan, Jan Mrityu Jara Vyadhi Dukha Dosha Dukha Dosha anu, Anuvartanam Basically, um, if we think deeply about it, why are we not able to think about God or make, make God a priority or not able to do Rupa Dhyan because our mind is attached to world. If you simply contemplate on these four things, that these are miseries, nobody can escape birth, death, old age and disease. Okay, Even if you lead a very healthy lifestyle, it is living responsibly, which is good. You are increasing the odds of your longevity. But can you escape a disease? No, you cannot. That is part and parcel of maya that you have to deal with because you are in this material body. So when you think deeply about these four things only, that will help you develop detachment from the world and, you know, and make it a priority in your head that something needs to be done about it. Right? Swamiji says that when you, when you start having an overdose of maya and you feel you know you are getting too engrossed in the world, take a trip to a hospital or a shamshan ghat immediately you will get a viragya you will say oh there's nothing life is nothing it is called basically in our scriptures shamshan viragya everybody have has it when you see somebody dying all all of a sudden you'll get developed detachment to the world oh there's nothing one day i'll go and after that bring it on you know a few days and you are on same thing happened to sugriv also by the way when lord ram you know, he said, uh, uh, he killed Bali and said, now you will be Kishkinda Naresh. He said, what am I going to do, Ram, uh, Ram Bhagwan? Take me along with you. I will help you find Mother Sita. I cannot uh, rule over the dead body of my brother and this and that. And he started doing a lot of vilap, pralap and all that stuff. And Ram simply smiled back at him and he said, Mitra, you are having a Kshanik Viragya. That means you are having a moment, momentary detachment. See, Ram Bhagwan knew it. So you go rule. After the monsoon season is over, I'll take your help. And this dude, he goes back and forgets. He's enjoying Angur and dance and everything. And then Lakshman had to go and remind him, hey, by the way, you've forgotten. But the point here is that uh, we get absorbed in Maya. That is how powerful it is. And uh, material body, if we, if we keep on uh, in, in, engaging, indulging and not doing Yagna, like God is saying, uh, then we keep on getting material body. And the reason we don't get detachment is because we have not seriously thought about the problems that this uh, uh, temporary material world poses to us. So if you simply think about these things, for these four of these, Jan, Mrityu, uh, Jara, Vyadhi, we will, we will start developing a bit of a viragya to the world as well. Buddha did that just by seeing once. Um, so that is the whole idea. 
So with that, let's have a quick discussion on why is it so difficult to develop a spirit of sacrifice? And because it seems a little counterintuitive concept that in giving one receives, what is the change that is needed and why is it so difficult to practice that? Is it lack of knowledge? Is it that I will, I'm going to miss out on some fun? Is it that, okay, I will miss out not only in this fun, what if God doesn't exist and this is all hocus pocus stuff? There must be some reason, right? Which is making us hold back or not being able to practice as, as uh, uh, intensely as probably we could even after listening to this knowledge or what holds us back. We can have a bit of a discussion on that. And then I think Monica is going to share some experience of hers with her. So maybe after a quick discussion, we can hand it over to you. Any announcements you wanted to make before that? Yes. Um, uh, it, main announcement is about the family camp. So we will have uh, the annual uh, grand event uh, that happens every year here in Dallas, which is the JKO family camp. Um, and that is going to be from July 4th to July 10th. Um, uh, lots of people have already registered, but uh, many more should be registering themselves. And Jan 31st is the last date for early bird registration where you can actually get 50% discount. So do not miss out on that opportunity. And also, I, as far as I understand, it will also be broadcasted online. So people who are going to be not physically present, please look out on the opportunity of registering and uh, benefiting from it virtually, specifically Shamji, at least uh, that is possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, I have posted the link uh, and the details. So please look at that and do register. There are so many uh, activities that happen in family camp. I attended mine for the first time last year and it was just mind blowing. So I really encourage all of you to uh, get benefited uh, from this. Famiji uh, will be there. Yeah. And those of you who have already registered and are messaging me, thank you. And uh, many more should be registering themselves. So yeah, that is the main announcement. And then feedback tracker also, I have posted the link. So please fill in your attendance, uh, your comments, feedback, or if you want to participate in giving any, you know, uh, presentation, um, like your experiences or shloka recitation or bhajans, so you can fill, fill those requests as well in the feedback track. Yes, I wouldn't like to encourage you like we used to have, I think we had a bit of a pause, participant presentation, so please fill out your name. I would really encourage you to come forward, share your experience, realizations, and that really goes a long way in inspiring others as well. And I'd love to hear from you. And uh, it would give me a little bit of a break where I can take a step back and listen to you as well. So please do sign up. Um, you know, we can, I would love to hear from all of you. Uh, you can put um, it in the feedback tracker and we'll facilitate it on uh, on the weekdays. Yeah, and just like, just to add, like we can have both kinds of participant presentations, either if you want to explain what you learned from the class like some of the concepts in terms of your understanding or you want to share your experience of your spiritual journey so you are welcome to present any of these and uh, you can put that request in the feedback track yes and please come forward and do that i really look forward to some of those presentations so thank you for calling that out sandhya and look out for some of the polls and quizzes as well um you know, so we will be testing your knowledge periodically, how much you are able to grasp for the last week in between. We'll not make it competitive, but maybe some kind of an interactive segment where we post questions. And if you are not in the 80% of what people are thinking, we'd love to hear from you. Why do you think that way? Okay, so look out for those segments as well. I'm getting started very soon. Okay, we have an official quiz master. I'm not going to disclose <laughs> his or her name, but look out for those segments as well coming in shortly. Okay, yes. So I also had one input regarding this uh, topic. Can I just quickly say? Sure. Yeah, so I think that one of the reason I feel is um, um, we have a mentality of limited resources. And if we start bringing in a mentality of abundance, then I think the attitude will change with respect to giving back and letting things go. 
Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. That mindset of limited thing, right? Not mindset of abundance. Very true. We think that we'll hold it back. Otherwise, we might miss out on something. That's a great point. I think Swamiji talks about that as well. Thank you for bringing that up. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Anna Purnaji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Uh, yes, you know, I am in India right now and then I couldn't, I couldn't register for the family camp. I think I heard you saying that it's going to, uh, you know, uh, you know, the... Online and uh, It's the online, uh, yeah, I want to attend on, online. But I don't know, you know, because I am going to be here have, for, for some yes. time. But I want to have the, uh, you know, link so I can register for that now, you know, online one. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I have posted the link. I will repost it. Um, okay. Visit. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. I know because I'm traveling and then I couldn't do it before I left you. Yes. Uh, if possible, can I attend in person right now? I will do it in online. And you pay the difference. In more than, you're more than welcome to do that in person, Annapurna ji, if you can travel to Dallas. But other than yes, that, you can share the link. Yeah. Share the link yes. with you and you can register and whatever works. If you can come in person, even better. I know I like to do that, but right now I will do it online from okay, India sure. because Understood. I don't know how the circumstances. Yeah, so, I guess once uh, you are registered, uh, if you can come in person with that registration, you should be able to come in person. Yeah, and come in person and pay the difference. Or I don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Have not that should be possible. Yes, that yes, should be. Oh, yeah. that is possible, so that's why. Okay. Yeah, okay, I will uh, uh copy the yes, thank you. Okay, okay. I see, Next. yeah, Padma Ji, Radhe Radhe, please, Radhe Radhe, Padma Ji. Radhe Radhe. Good yes. to hear from you, Padmaji, after a long time. Yes, it has been a long time. <laughs> but you forgot us, so... <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> that oh. can be guaranteed. As long as I remember Krishna, I will remember everybody. So oh, that, yes. that's for sure. Um, I, I dialed in just 10 minutes ago. I could be completely out of context, but I'm just looking at the question, right? Why do we forget... Or why we are, our sadhana is not so intense. All the 700 verses that we have been chewing and contemplating upon, every single verse is a question. Every single verse is an answer. Every single verse relate to us. In us, there is Arjuna. In us, there is Duryodhana. In us, all the different versions of characters that are there. So for each of us, it could be one of those verses why we cannot focus as intense as we are supposed to on God and always remember God, right? That, that was one thought which came my way. And the other thing is we have been so conditioned in our mind to be so satisfied with the external things unless we give an opportunity because the previous slide that you had, Nitinji, about the samskaras, um, what a person is and how they think and their tendencies of the choices that they make in their life, even if God is present right in front of them, even if there is a temple present right in front of them, even, even they have some time for themselves where they can actually allow themselves to meditate upon God somehow either because of karmas or either because of their free will that they don't execute, there is not that internal drive or you know that zeal or that that thirst that they have and it doesn't come and I feel like it's a combination of multiple things which is samskaras also and also they are not executing their willpower you can just sit wherever you're sitting and you can still meditate upon God you really you you can be anywhere that you want to be so executing that willpower and wanting to reach that God that drive has to come and if you if one doesn't have it at least giving themselves an opportunity to try something because I think we're all afraid to try something which is so different and probably it's an uphill battle and we struggle, we fall, we fail and we are afraid of the failure, we don't try it. That was the second thing that I wanted to say. Um, as long as our mind is satisfied, let's say you have money, you're happy. Let's say you have a good family, you're happy. Let's say you have a car, you're happy. Let's say you have a good job, you're happy. So when you're in that comfort zone, you're really not looking for anything else beyond your own material satisfaction. But when life 
gives you some troubles, which is a good thing that things come, a bad things come in a way, then you're able to contemplate upon something which is much bigger than your own mind and your own mind satisfaction. No, great point. True. Sometimes adversities give us an incentive or a reason to um, look for a bigger meaning in life and that may be a gateway for us to explore spiritually. Thank you so much, uh, Padmaji. Let's hear from, uh, I see, new hand, Prabhat Chi, please go ahead. Adi, Adi, Prabhat Ji. Monica Ji, you can gear up after that. Adi, Adi, Nidin Ji. Uh, so, basically, there are two things that I want to share. The first thing is related to the uh, picture that you have shared, two pictures. So, when I looked at that uh, picture at first time, I was um, uh, thinking that both pictures are same. Like uh, uh, in first picture, uh, uh, Jatayu is in service, and in the second picture, uh, Ramji is uh, giving service to Jatayu. So it's like in one picture, uh, in both of the picture, I, I can see the love, like love of uh, um, Bhakt and uh, love of the God. Uh, so this is the first thing. And uh, in the second thing, you mentioned about the cloud. So, uh, uh, I have wrote two lines uh, when I was very young. So that time uh, I wrote this thing like, I asked you about this, why is water burning? I asked you about this, why is water burning? The water said to me, you are also a water burning, why is water burning? I was a water burning, but I was not a water burning, I was a water burning. So this is something related to the thing that you have mentioned today. And uh, uh, my question is, like, uh, when, uh, as you said that we all uh, we have to give it to our back, right? So in that sense, uh, one should think to accumulate more and then give it to uh, uh, We have to do it in continuous uh, uh, If I understood your question, should we accumulate? First of all, that couplet was very nice. Uh, Padal, you can post that maybe on the chat as well. Uh, that is beautiful. Very true. That is the spirit of uh, clouds that it accumulates uh, all to give give back, right? That we were talking about in our session as well. Accumulation, I think, see, um, Aparigraha is one of the things which is spoken about even in Patanjali Yoga Sutra. And when Vivekanand Swami Vivekanand was asked, what is poison? He said, anything over and above that you over and above that you don't need for your survival is a poison. So with that sense, we hold a lot of things. So yes, we can earn more so that we can give more. That is one part of it. But accumulation becomes an intermittent stage in between, right? So when you are accumulating, um, it's like this thing happened, right? Um, it becomes more of a mindset at that point where uh, you don't even have a tendency to hold. Like Bhikshuk, if you look at it, they are not even sure when, when are they going to get the next meal that they are going to get, right? So they have a complete set of surrender to God that he's going to take care of us. So um, uh, I don't know how that works, basically. Do you accumulate, then you give back or you give back right away as soon as you get? That is a very <laughs> textual question. But Maharaj also said that um, the spirit of giving is also not only dictated by how much you give, but what percentage you give. Right? So he said that the true charity begins after 10%. 10% is anyway needed, you know, to purify your wealth. But you should, it's a very advanced stage. Okay, we are not there yet. At least I'm not there, conditioned mind, where you simply sustain yourself and give the rest of it away. I don't know what will be that spirit to be in, right? So uh, that's a have a sorry your voice is breaking big time we are not able to hear you clearly Prabhat. yeah i guess we can move further 
because there is some network yeah, issue. If you have a question, you can put that. We can have an offline conversation around that. So, Monica Ji, please go ahead since we have some time and then we can come back to the questions. Uh, and Monica Ji, she wanted to share something uh, with us. So, we are all ears to you now. And let's put yeah. some pressure on you by putting you on spotlight as well. Spotlight. <laughs> Okay. Yes, uh, I have made you the co-host. You should be able to share if you want to share any presentation on it. It's actually just the experience uh, that we have. Uh, and uh, experience of my lifetime, actually a point of no return for me, if I can say that. I've shared this thing with Nitinji already. Couldn't meet you, so that's so couldn't share it with you. But then a uh, good platform that I can share, share it with everybody. So um, uh, it, this happened almost three weeks back. Uh, my younger sister, look, we are, we are three sisters and my eldest brother. So my younger sister, she lives in New Jersey and she's expecting and uh, she's in her fifth month now. And she's a, if I may say, gym freak. <laughs> she just loves working out. And here in America, when you see a lot of, uh, you know, women going to the gym when they're expecting, she thought that probably she could also do the same. And she consulted the doctors and doctors said that you, whatever you do, you can just reduce it to 50% and then you can continue going to the gym. So she, in her almost four and a half month, uh, she was in the gym on the treadmill. She inclined the treadmill and then she was walking on it and she did not really realize. And then she started running because she usually runs, but then the size of the baby also grows over time. So, so she started running and then she felt something dropped in her tummy. She held it and sat. She knew what happened, but then she didn't want to confront it. She was like, maybe I hope everything is okay. So she did not feel uh, pain or anything that day. But next day onwards, she started getting contractions. She went to the doctor, emergency actually, and uh, she was getting contraction every half an hour at that time. She went to the doctor in emergency. Doctor said, did ultrasound everything. And he, he said that everything is fine. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about this. Baby is just moving around. And not, not many people, whoever is joining us from Bharat would know that uh, doctors in America are not so detailed when it comes to any kind of disease or you know, uh, in any kind of situations like this. So they just said, give a heads up that you can go home. This could be like false uh, contractions. She came home. Following days, uh, she started getting contractions more frequently now. It started like half an hour. Then it came to 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. And then once the you know one week passed by, she had to go to the emergency again because she couldn't just take the pain. Because false contraction, you don't get the pain. I mean, it, it's there, but you don't you know, get so much pain. So she went to the emergency for the second time. Then the doctor also said the same thing that, you know, baby is down actually, breech position, everything, but still everything is normal. How can everything be normal? You know, we all, we all know that, especially mothers. Uh, but then she was sent back. She came back home and then she was, my mother from India, she was, you know, doing a video call with her every single time. And then my mother, she called me and my husband on Saturday morning. This happened after a week of whatever she was going through in the morning on Saturday and she was crying and she said, Mona, you have to go. You just, just go. I was actually wearing this <laughs> and then a track. I, you know, put on my jacket and then we just uh, did the image ticket, left for the airport, reached in the evening in New Jersey. I could see that every, she was getting pain every five minutes. Those were real contractions. And uh, just, it was, I, I can now say that it was, it was a possible miscarriage at that point of time. I went there, no medication given, nothing. I, I looked at her, she, she considers me like a mother. And, and I was at a, at a position that I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. I was like, you know, she's, she's hoping that I'll do something or maybe I've come, so I'll do something, you know, about the situation. But then she was just in pain. Every five minutes I could see that, you know, she's just not crying, but then I could see, I could feel her pain. All I, so I, you know, I start tearing up and I, you know, uh, because I'm, I'm almost in that situation again. I went to, the temple that she has in her house, right? Small mandir. Uh, cleaned up diyas, lit diya, had my morpunk with me. I kept it there. Like, Krishna, I don't know what to do. All yours. Just surrendered, sat there. And this happened almost at 8 o'clock at night. I did not literally eat my dinner also at that time. She couldn't sleep until 4 o'clock in the morning. But 4 o'clock, she gets up, smiling, and tells us, the pain is gone, B. I said, did you take any medicine? No, the I did not, but it's gone. Then she wanted to get up and start, you know, start, start, she wanted to walk. But then we told her that you have to keep your leg elevated and stuff like that. But it was gone. Like completely gone. And 
we did not do any medication all i did was i just sat there and obviously that's the natural thing that comes you know tears that surrender to krishna and back home my mother we arish devis mahadev she was sitting there that's all we did a week of pain where she was getting five contraction every 5 minutes she was free of pain morning 4 o'clock she slept got up at 9 o'clock she's like the this is after almost 10 days i'm getting this kind of sleep i got this kind of sleep and i i felt as if i slept for 10 hours whereas obviously she slept only for 5 hours so that day um she was getting a little pressure because the baby was moving up but then that pressure was also gone after 4 5 hours and by krishna's grace she's absolutely fine i could see all that happening i could i could feel the energy i'm i'm the kinds who would want to see miracles or you know something so that you know my my belief or faith you know it strengthens strengthens but at that on that day i i knew that this is like no point of you know return for me so i stayed there for a week came back after coming back also i'm i'm you know i'm regular in my rug dhyan and everything but on sunday morning when i had this balmukund class uh, got up late because saturday we had some guests and all that sunday morning i got up couldn't do my rug dhyan but i told krishna that krishna ab gussa to nahi hona because you know we had these kind of conversations with uh yeah but i was like you know i'll, I'll do my rug dhyan but in the evening uh, but then now i feel a connection kind of thing right i have been asking nitin ji that nitin ji because since you the one who's you know who's who actually pulled me into this i want a more punk from you i i i also asked you like almost a month back right nitin ji that day when i went to balmukund on my table i i saw more punk so these signs these so like nitin ji says that you know we have miracles happening around us is just that we we have to be more mindful about it this happened i don't know if i if i took a shortcut in explaining nitin ji but then it was miraculous for me no thank miraculous. you thank you for sharing that um, here is the medium how we communicate with god right and wonders wonders do happen um, with the spirit of surrender wonders can happen right not that we make it a goal but they do happen and in this case it is solidifying your faith right and that connect with krishna and possibly it was krishna who came in person to put that more punk for you who knows right we have been searching for it i mean i was, I was looking at how to find one but finally you got one right but thank you for the <laughs> story uh, krishna has his own ways of uh, uh, building that hook you know with people who are ready and especially the people who are at the tipping point he has his ways of building that hook and in this case i think this incident probably was the tipping point for you to have that right now that you are having a one on one with krishna on a regular basis which is amazing so thank you for sharing that yes just anybody? one more point nitin ji just one more point uh, she had that small more punk that i kept in and let be in front of it i kept that more punk beneath her pillow that day very nice and then faith or whatever you say it it was like right there and at 4 o'clock when she got up and told me di gaya are nahi ho raha are kuch nahi ho raha uchhane ki koshish kar rahi hai <laughs> they were like you know take it easy take it easy but then you know when i saw her jumping out of you know joy ki you know i'm i'm pain free now you know that the the whole idea that of human body hai kuch bhi ho sakta hai materialistic hai sab kuch and all that like you said that you have to go you know visit visit a hospital whenever you feel that you know kya hai jag mein all those feelings everything like came at once beautiful very nice see it's like this right today again so many beautiful forwards come related to krishna it's like if there's a mountain that we are supposed to climb in this life right he's not going to take away that mountain that will remain but he'll make the climbing easy but with bhakti he can shrink the mountain also that is the power of bhakti so he can even make the mountain shrink or he will give you the better capacity to scale that mountain right so that's how this path goes thank you for sharing that beautiful just one last thing nitin ji and now i'm just coming to my mind so my yes. brother in law and my husband both of them are i mean they they do bhakti but at their own convenience right and they saw that i i can say i can see changes in my husband also and in my brother in law also he was the one who was actually playing guitar the other day right out of he's like a metal <laughs> rock star play whatever but then that day he played on you know hum katha sunate ram uh, yeah that one he so, he's a wonderful guitarist by the way you you got a very talented bunch of people around you and your sister 
love to have her back and do some singing again great mm-hmm. if, if they yeah, get yeah. the hook to krishna nothing like it right the entire family if it is it becomes a uh, it becomes very favorable right to do your own bhakti and sadhana very nice yes. to hear that. these are uh, all the grand plans of krishna you know jadugar sham so it's like all the miracles are always happening it just our perspective changes and we start realizing them that every day all the time everything is a miracle of very true. very very true wonderful so we can probably take one more hand and then we get to our devotional segment that uh, i think we need to have that we have not had it so maybe a few hands for the devotional segment and then we move to that maybe we can take one more hand yeah um and there are also messages that have come directly to me as well for uh, uh monica ji um yeah i mean basically everybody is saying that thank you for sharing your experience and it has reminded them also of their own experiences which were the miracles that they have seen in their lives and uh, ganpriya ji says that grace pours uh, upon us only on complete surrender so i mean when yeah how are we saying when we progress swami ji said that when we progress on this journey with our experiences the faith becomes so strong that there remains no scope of doubt and that's what you are experiencing so very very nice now you term it as a miracle or what but this is how krishna has his own ways of reinforcing okay. our faith yeah. when we approach it very nice amazing yeah okay manoranjan ji uh, radhe radhe please go ahead ஜார்வின்யா human beings are, are being created from a single cell amoeba and the other is the ego but the concept is actually wrong we all has been reading this in our high school even in uh, after that also but uh, this concept is actually a wrong concept altogether so we must internalize this and then we must do something so that uh, this system whatever we are uh, being thought uh, should be should be should be revised should be revisited and should be corrected uh, so if uh, jk yog academy should uh, my advice yeah. is that if yeah. take some initiative on this then that would be great thank you yeah i can i can we can probably manoranjan ji start a campaign go fund me we should collect some fund to sue darwin's theory okay which is misleading so many people so good idea but i think the more people have an awareness you don't even need to do anything they they just understand the deeper principles around this thing right darwinism uh, swami ji talks about it in some of his lectures as well right the theory of evolution that talks about for them to have random mutations fall in place you know how many what is the statistical or probabilistic theory of having something as complex as this retina that we have i getting formed is very very thin so there are too many loopholes in that but anyways uh, scriptures tell us very clearly how brahma ji uh, you know went about creating this whole thing um, so but science has to have an explanation right and unless you can prove that explanation wrong that remains the truth for a long period of time and in fact uh, some of the missing links were there as well as part of darwin's theory fossil missing links were there uh, which over a period of time scientists had filed to make it look so a lot of things are there but yes i think we don't need to read too much into it as long as the broader concepts of spirituality are clear to us and we know what we need to do on a day to day basis so and if we are planning to go around collecting funds maybe we can put them to the fundraiser for the university project i yes. think so if you can put it for the fundraiser for university project yeah i will create a campaign there to uh, counter darwin theory there okay but let's <laughs> let's get the university built first okay we have our fundraiser already created we have a lot of angels signed up so please go visit our page and donate as best as you can and reach out to friends and family as well see it's a 5 million campaign and it's not a big target you just need to reach out to 5 million people with 1 dollar each okay and it's done 
so simple and this world has 7 billion people okay so it's it's not as tall order as it may seem okay um so there are two more hands but do we want to get started with the devotional segment now yeah, let's take a few hands for devotion because i know we are over and we try to wrap it up by 10 15 anybody who wants to have a devotional uh chanting today who wants to sing so um, padma ji sumesh ji if you want to do devotional chanting please keep your hand raised otherwise you can put it down yeah you can put it in the feedback tracker if you have anything and if you have interest put it down i'll spin the wheel okay so that everybody gets a, a chance basically shri ramya if you're around i know you you it is belated now you didn't get a chance uh, but yeah, I would I would encourage you to uh, put your name so that we can spin the wheel and then call out, you know, get everybody a chance around that. I guess uh, so the ones who have raised hand are for chanting only. That's what I'll say. We can pick up two hands then and then wrap it up. Okay. Uh, Jonji or uh, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Uh, Radhe Radhe, are you sure I can go? You don't have other hands ready to go? You're okay? Yeah? yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure. Nitinji, you um, let me know. Have I sung this one before? Namo Namaha Deva Shambhu. Did I sing this one about Lord Shiva? Even you if you have know. sung, that's fine. Um, we have very... Shivratri is coming. You can sing it again. <laughs> All right. Okay. Because I, I can't remember. So, okay. I'll give it a try. I haven't sung in a while, but I'll give it a try. Okay. Namo Mahadeva Shambhu Namo Sadashiva Om Jai Parameshwara Jai Bhuvaneshwara Jai Shiva Shankar Om Namo Mahadeva Shambhu Namo Sadashiva Om Jai Parameshwara Jai Bhuvaneshwara Jai Shiva Shankar Om Bhavani Shankar Uma Maheshwara Girija Shankar Bhavani Shankar Uma Maheshwara Girija Shankar Jai Prayalankar Jai Pitambar Jai Shiva Shankar Namo Mahadeva Shambhu Namo Sadashiva Om Jai Parameshwara Jai Bhuvaneshwara Jai Shiva Shankar Om Har Har Mahadeva Gauri Manohar Har Shiva Shankar Om Har Har Mahadeva Gauri Manohar Har Shiva Shankar Om Dukha Har Lekar Sukha Bardekar Jai Shiva Shankar Om Namo Mahadeva Shambhu Namo Sadashiva Om Jai Parameshwara Jai Bhuvaneshwara Jai Shiva Shankar Om Parvati Shankar Ganga Jadahar Karina Shankar Parvati Shankar Ganga Jadahar Karina Shankar Neela Kanta Dar Akhileshwara Dar Jai Shiva Shankar Namo Mahadeva Shambhu 
नमो सदा जय परमेश्वर जय भुवनेश्वर जय शिव शंकर जय शिव शंकर नतरज सुंदर हर हर शंकर जय शिव शंकर नतरज सुंदर हर हर शंकर जय दम रूपर जय कैलेश्वर जय शिव शंकर नमो महादेव शंभु नमो सदाशिव जय परमेश्वर जय भुवनेश्वर जय शिव शंकर नमो महादेव शंभु नमो सदाशिव जय परमेश्वर जय भुवनेश्वर जय शिव शंकर जय शिव शंकर जय शिव शंकर ओम नमः शिवाय जय राधे राधे ओम नमः शिवाय राधे राधे वेरी नाइस जून जी लुक्स लाइक you've been practicing a lot in your temple singing it, it is showing off and you have really set the tone for mahashivratri with this beautiful bhajan have you been singing at the temple uh, no actually for the last um, two and a half three years i have not been singing at my temple i kind of got kicked out because they got professional singers <laughs> no seriously no i haven't been um so this was before we had a new kirtan group i used to sing but then we got a new kirtan group so they have really taken over so um you know we're on the sidelines so no i have not been singing it just i have to thank the lord that he, i he still graced me that i'm still able to sing so from time to time i will just you know sing a bhajan or two here and there but not in the temple now so but nice. thank you for listening no thank you it was very beautiful melodious and bhavpoon just in time because i have a call i had to wrap it up at 10:59 i know a little over but i still have time but thank you so much i see a few more hands please fill out the feedback tracker we'll spin the wheel tomorrow uh, we've run out of time unfortunately today uh, but we'll pick you up tomorrow so tomorrow i don't know tomorrow is book club i believe but yeah whenever the next session we have an extended yeah. session Uh, but fill out the feedback tracker so that i'll get all the nominations around it so thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation tomorrow we talk about devatas don't miss out about that session very important session and uh, from a knowledge standpoint i think it's important to know who are devatas can you become a devata what do they do why has god created them and to really look at it in perspective so thank you so much again i look forward to seeing you tomorrow stay blessed have a wonderful day great rest of your evening radhe radhe from my side Yes, thank yeah. you, Monica Ji, for sharing the experience. Thank you, Joan Ji, for a beautiful rendition. I would love to see your uh, video on as well. I want to put a face on uh, this voice. Okay, uh, I will. I will do that soon. Ready, ready. Thank you. Yeah, it's right, just right. I'm in my night clothes. We're one hour ahead. It's eleven fifteen, eleven eighteen actually. So I'm ready. <laughs> so next time I will put my video on, so you can put a, a name to a face. All right. Yes. Radhe, yes. Radhe. Thank you so much. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, everyone. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you.